Good evening. Welcome to St. Raphael Parish. As we celebrate Sunday Masses, for the safety of all in attendance, we ask that everyone wear a mask and follow social distancing during Mass. Readings and prayers for the Mass are available on My Parish app. This weekend, we resume the 5.30 p.m. Sunday Mass, and we continue to post the 4.30 p.m. Mass today on our website. Please take a moment to silence your electronic device. Thank you. Today's Mass intention is for the parishioners of St. Raphael. The celebrant of our Mass is Father Lou. Today we celebrate the 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time. God's power brings peace. God's mercy brings justice. Let us give thanks to God. Please stand. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Good evening, everybody. Well, we've already survived sort of a storm here this evening. We'll hear about more storms in the readings here today. And just as we prepare for this Mass, we just call to mind the Lord drawing near to us in the midst of whatever storms we've been through this past week, sharing with us his peace and his love. We also call to mind the times that we've turned away from that peace, the times that we've sinned, and ask for his mercy and his forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit we dare to call our Father, bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. At the mountain of God, Horeb, Elijah came to a cave where he took shelter. Then the Lord said to him, Go outside and stand on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord will be passing by. A strong and heavy wind was rending the mountains and crushing rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, there was a tiny whispering sound. When he heard this, Elijah hid his face in his cloak and went and stood at the entrance of the cave. The word of the Lord. Peace. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I speak the truth in Christ. I do not lie. My conscience joins with the Holy Spirit in bearing me witness that I have great sorrow and constant anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites. There's the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. There's the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, is the Christ, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. After he had fed the people, Jesus made the disciples get into a boat and proceed him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. After doing so, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat, already a few miles offshore, was being tossed about by the waves, for the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, he came toward them, walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said and they cried out in fear. At once, Jesus spoke to them, Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. 
Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught Peter and said to him, O you of little faith, why did you doubt? After they got into the boat, the wind died down. Those who were in the boat did him homage, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. All right. It's the last time I was moving too much, and I lost our viewers from home a little bit, so I'm going to stay a little bit more rooted this time. Sorry, I'm learning. Um, if I get to, if I start roaming too far, just throw something at me. Uh, so, so sometimes with readings, right? You know, the different readings we're presented to in Scripture. Some of them, I mean, let's be real. Like some of them are pretty strange or kind of complicated, and we kind of need to walk through them and explain them a little bit to really understand what the heck Jesus is trying to tell us. But then there's other times when we're presented with readings from the church on a given Sunday, uh, and they kind of just make sense to us in a certain sense. There's some, a meaning that we can kind of get from them. And then the challenge isn't so much trying to understand it, so much as trying to live it out. And I would argue, I'll try and do a little bit of explaining, but I'd argue that the readings today are more the latter. Uh, they're more a challenge for us. How do we live out what we're hearing and seeing in the scriptures? And really, so what we're seeing and what we're pre- being presented with today is the story of four storms, right? So the first storm is obvious. It's the storm in the gospel we just heard, the storm on the Sea of Galilee. And it's a literal storm, right? You know, I was looking into the science of the Sea of Galilee the other day, and it's something about the Sea of Galilee. It's the lowest freshwater lake in the world, and it's between mountains. And it's something when the wind comes down, it can cause these spontaneous and violent storms. They've uncovered all these ancient boats from the kind of dredged from the bottom of that lake. And so it was very much a dangerous place, especially in the pitch black of night. So we're we're kind of shown this terrifying for the disciples, this terrifying storm on the Sea of Galilee in a very literal sense. Then in the first reading, we have the story of Elijah. And Elijah's in this cave where he encounters sort of a literal storm as well. There's wind, there's fire, there's the earth quaking. But this is also pointing to really the story of who Elijah is. And it's calling back, it's really Elijah's story is one of a lot of anger and violence. Anger and violence of royalty chasing him. There's a reason why he's hiding in this cave. But some of his own anger and violence that he's acted out as well. And so there's this literal storm, but then there's also this storm swirling inside his own heart. Then we have the third storm in the second reading, where Paul is talking to the Romans. And so you think Paul is speaking to the Romans, a.k.a. kind of the bad guys, right? Like throughout the gospel stories, the Romans are the cruel oppressors. And so if you think in the early church, all of a sudden you have Roman Christians and Jewish Christians, and they're constantly at each other's throats. There's this huge internal storm within the early church. You could argue that internal storm has never fully left the church, but it was at its most intense in the early church, where there is so much division and so much real hatred between people who are supposedly meeting at the Lord's Supper. And so Paul's speaking in this situation to the Roman Christians who are so eager, it's like, yeah, you know what? Let's just kick the Jewish Christians out. They had their shot. They blew it. It's just going to be the Gentile church from now on. And Paul's saying, no, you know, these are the people that God has chosen throughout the history of, the, of our faith. And so there's this encouragement to walk through this storm, this internal storm. So we have one literal storm, Sea of Galilee, two, the storm on Mount Horeb with an internal and external storm. We have the internal storm in the early church in Rome. And then we have the fourth storm, which the church presents to us, perhaps the most important storm, and that's your storm. That's our storm. And so the church very concretely has given us these three readings all tied together, all talking about this tension and swirling winds and and crashing waves and proposes it to us. What is our storm? And obviously there are certain storms in the world today that we're all going through, right? There's the storm of the pandemic. There's the storm of world and national politics. But each one of us has our own personal storm. 
And sometimes it's connected to those bigger ones going on in the world, but oftentimes it's something in our family. Oftentimes it's something in our own heart when we look in the mirror, what storm is raging in our own heart. What are those things that keep us up at night? What are those things that keep us from ever truly resting? What are those things that push our buttons and make us very, very angry whenever we're tapped into an intense sadness or anger or fear? That's tapping into that storm in our own hearts. So I want you to keep thinking about what is that storm? What is that storm in your life here today? You know, sometimes like Tampa weather or St. Pete weather, they can come and go on the day. But here as you're sitting in this pew, what is raging in your own heart? What has been going on this past month or through this journey? What is that storm? Because then each of the readings start to, to dive into that storm a little bit. You know, we see in the first reading with Elijah, he steps out of the cave and encounters the Lord in this still, small voice. Not in the big kind of show that the Lord had worked throughout the Old Testament leading up to that point. Not in the show of the anger or violence that Elijah had come to experience. But it was in this stillness and quiet that he encountered the Lord in the midst of this storm. In the second reading, Paul is crying out to the church, listen, I speak to you the truth in Jesus Christ, the Christ who reigns over all, who unifies us. He's calling them to shift their eyes from these divisions, from the differences, from the hatred, onto Jesus Christ, who won life for each and every one of them. And then, of course, we have that beautiful kind of mini story within a story in the gospel of Peter getting out of the boat, diving into the storm with Christ, seeing that with faith, with hope, with excitement, keeping his eyes fixed on Christ until he sees the strength of the wind and wave and he starts to sink. And so we have this imagery in each and every one of these readings, Elijah seeing the Lord in the stillness, the early Christians looking to Christ instead of what divides them. Peter keeping his eyes fixed on Christ and temporarily living out a miracle, walking on stormy waters until he takes his eyes off again. And so then the question is posed to each one of us in our storms, what are we looking at? Where are our eyes fixed? And of course, well, we can say, like, okay, the correct answer is Jesus, right? It's the Lord. It's what all of these readings are saying. So we don't have to figure it out. Again, it's a challenge. It's asking each one of us, what have we really been focused on? And are we looking at the wind and the waves, the differences and divisions, the anger and the violence that has been done to us or that we have done to others? Or are we looking at Christ? I mean, we've all lived out this moment, I think. I certainly have, but you lived out something similar where you almost, like, turn on the news asking in your head, like, what's going to tick me off today? You know, like, what's going to make me angry? What's going to rob me of my peace? Like, or something happens, and like, oh, let's see what this person has to say on social media. It's almost like we look for ways to enter more deeply into the storm than to turn back to Christ in prayer. It was this constant battle for me in seminary, right, where I would be going to spiritual direction with, you know, these old wiser priests who are kind of helping me get through seminary, and I'm talking about all the problems and the guys who are driving me crazy and all the difficulties I've been facing, and they'll always ask, well, well where's the, how's the Lord with you in that? And it's always at that moment when I realized, yeah, I haven't really been going to the Lord with that. You know, I can sit and pray and do my prayers and do all these different things, but I don't know if I'm bringing my storm to him. I don't know if I'm encountering Christ in that storm. And so that is the challenge for me and for you in the readings today. You know, if we find that every time we turn on the news or go on Facebook or have a, a conversation with this particular person or, or put ourselves in particular situations, and we find that every time we do that, we're getting more and more angry or more and more frustrated or have more and more hatred in our heart for a particular politician or person in our family or whoever, maybe the challenge is stop doing that. You know, maybe it's the challenge of can I be brave enough to turn off the TV and not invest in the news cycle this week? Can I be brave enough to maybe leave my phone and social media behind? Can I be brave enough to take some time away from work or financial concerns or all the different things that are constantly plaguing my attention and just be with the people that I love? 
Each one of us is going to have a particular challenge connected to that particular storm in our life. And so I encourage you to turn towards Jesus this week. And here at this Mass and spending today thinking and praying with the Lord about what that would look like. What are the storms in your life here tonight, here today? And what are those things that will really and truly authentically bring you peace? Maybe it's going out for a walk. Maybe it's spending time with your family or a good friend that you haven't spoken to in a while. Maybe it is carving out some time for silence and prayer, not to figure out the world or figure out your own life, but to just be with Jesus Christ in the midst of the storm. I'll leave you with, with, with one image. Uh, so uh, Father Curtis and I, you know, we've been getting used to this whole journey here at St. Raphael's, and I was walking back from the office the other day, and he was just resting on the seawall, kind of just enjoying uh, the view and everything. And I'm walking along the seawall, kind of heading towards him, seeing kind of different cracks and where the seawall is pulling away. I'm like, oh man, this is going to be like a lot of money to fix, and I don't know when it's going to happen, but we're going to have to do it. And I kind of pull up next to him, and he turns towards me. He's like, man, we live in paradise. Can you believe they assigned us here? And it's just like, just in that moment, just to laugh and say, yeah, you know what? We do. And how good is the Lord, and how present he is here in this moment. It's not saying the storms don't exist, Right? Those storms in our life are real. It's saying that no matter what, as we walk through those storms, Jesus Christ walks through those storms with us. He can walk on the water. He can help us to walk on the water. And if we start to sink, he can pull us back up. He's done it before, and he can do it again. And now, brothers and sisters, in the midst of everything that's going on in our lives and in our hearts, we turn to the Lord in faith as we profess our creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life for the world to come. Amen. Brothers and sisters, strengthened in our faith, we come before the Lord with all of our needs and the needs of our sisters and brothers. For the church, that realizing the Lord's presence in our midst may give us courage as we work together to build the kingdom of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those threatened by natural disasters at this time of year, drought, floods, tornadoes, and hurricanes, that they may be kept safe. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those listening for God's voice as they discern their vocation, that they may know the Lord's presence and trust in God's love and support. 
We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us who struggle to recognize God's presence in our lives, that we may find good counsel and encouragement from family, friends, and our parish community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who risk their lives for our safety and health, the military, first responders, and healthcare workers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and injured of our parish, especially Ann Caro, may they find their burdens lightened through the prayer and faith in God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Jennifer Nictor, may they find peace in the loving arms of God. And for the parishioners of St. Raphael, the intention of this Mass. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful God, you welcome our pleas for mercy and forgiveness, and you never fail to respond. Listen to the prayers of those in your care as you answer them according to your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. Love. 
Holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith Bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Raphael, our patron, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence We rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Gregory, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. 
listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy the full, forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With and let us offer each other some sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Just a couple of announcements. Uh, we don't have any you know, special baptisms or confirmations this weekend. I think we're kind of moving through that season. That next weekend on Saturday, August 15th, is the Solemnity of the Assumption of the Virgin Mary. Now, for those of you who are really plugged in, would recognize that as one of the typical holy days of obligation. Because it's on that weekend, uh, the obligation is dispensed. You are still welcome to come to Mass that Saturday morning, but it kind of flows into the weekend liturgies as well. And if you don't want to come into church to watch Mass on Saturday, you can also live stream the Mass coming from the cathedral, the Mass of Ordination. So we had some baptisms here last week, and then uh, confirmations the week, uh, or last week and then the week before. And now this week we have three uh, young men entering into the priesthood, uh, Drew Woodkey, Connor Penn, and Joshua Bertrand. So keep them in your prayers. Those are guys that Father Curtis and I have, have gone through seminary with and know well. And they have been waiting to be ordained for a long time uh, throughout all this quarantine. Normally it happens earlier, right around, uh, right after Easter. Um, but this has kind of been delayed a little bit. And so we pray for them as they enter and they may be good and holy priests. And just to continue to pray for each other as we journey through the parish. For those of you joining us from home, keep us in your prayers and know that we are certainly praying for you as well. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.